marginally higher low break. We have type three, which are typically double bottoms, triple bottoms. They're not that reliable. And then remember type two setup. We have a type two variant one. What does that mean? That means you're gonna have that low, marginally higher low. And then it comes in for that third swipe and then it just fucking accelerates higher. Uh, Alex, out of all these three or four type of setups or variants, which one is our 90-10 most reliable one that if you only focused on, it would make you fucking money for days to come? Type one. Is it type, type one? Beautiful. And why is that? What about type one specifically makes it a powerful setup? Uh, it has order flow behind it. Fucking beautiful, man. Done. Done. You got, I love it, man. You guys are paying attention. Keep fucking remembering all this stuff. Write it down if you have to. Type one, you have that low. Short sellers get in on that break. They get trapped. Stop at localized structure point. Next goes back. Hits their stops. Uh, most retail traders will, will remove their stops or won't even trade with stops at all. And then if the markets are forgiving enough, which more often than not they are, you'll get exit order flow where it'll pull back to that neckline to give you a chance to break even or to close for a small loss and then boom that's when the short squeeze happens because then you'll get new players come in which is buyers new demand etc etc there's order flow behind it essentially what, and that is what makes this setup so fucking powerful now that doesn't mean that there's not order flow in any of these setups there there is man but they're a lot more trickier to identify because you have to wait for that order for for the market makers to reveal their hand right for like i said that type for that type two variant one setup, you see you have that low, that higher low. You know there's liquidity down there, but you don't know fully if price is gonna break out and then continue or if it's gonna do this. You don't know that full fully, but you know with this, you already know what the fuck happened. Traders got trapped, they got stopped, they got trapped, and they're getting squeezed out. With this one, you know that stop and order flow. If you see that one, this is also another powerful one, but it rarely happens. But if you do see it, you know that all that liquidity got flushed, and when you see that acceleration, you know that a short squeeze is coming. But the type two setup is a little bit more tricky. You do get divergent structures, yes. But remember, it's a little bit tricky because you still have liquidity that builds up underneath that. And double bottoms are just, they're not as reliable, man, because their strike rate is just so fucking low because every retail trader is gonna associate that pattern. They're going to just, it's such an easy thing to see and to understand that they don't even have to understand anything ab about that. They just see, oh, it's a double fucking bottom. It's what you learn in trading courses or in fucking books or on YouTube. I'm going to take it. And even if you, even if it did have a high strike rate, bro, I, I would be hesitant to take them. But they are important to identify on higher time frames. I just wouldn't trade them on lower time frames. But anyways, uh, the reason we're, we don't trade them is because the geometric target on that is barely a fucking one-to-one -one, bro so let's say you wait on the break the geometry the distance from entry to exit to target is barely a one-to-one -one, bro i'm not trying to take those kind of fucking trades man the fuck is that we want to take high reward asymmetry profiles with our trades so if it offers a one to two three four one to five even better bro the more the better because the bigger re reward to risk profiles that you have, bro, you could essentially take a lot more hits along the way and still be profitable as long as you manage risk. But because we have a high strike rate, high reward, fucking uh, um, cons consistent setups, like that's why we, when we lose money, bro, it should be insignificant. Because we know we're going to win probably on the next goddamn trade. So these are the setups, man. These are our core setups. And then fil to filter it out, wait for those grind line breaks. Wait for those daily, weekly, monthly lows to be breached. You want to conduct your trading activity at the extreme points of price. Then you tie it in with those grind line breaks. And then, then, then you'll get another one of our setups, which is the volatility compression funnels, which is what I'm teaching you guys. So you might get a divergent structure, you know, one of our type one, type two setups. You might accelerate higher and then you just start to ebb and you flow and then you might get price contract at a key price level it could be a round number it could be a midpoint number you know zeros double zeros or 50s and then you start to see remember for the for the volatility compression funnel to be very accurate man you need the high to be put in first you need a high put in first 
then the low, then you need this descending structure in terms of highs and then ascending lows. Descending highs, ascending lows. And then remember that midpoint needs to be at a key round number. And then if you take your volume by price, which I'll teach you guys how to use again in this training, the volume by price needs to line up where there's high amounts of volumes and it'll typically line up underneath, slightly above, or literally exactly at that key round number. That's when you know accumulation is occurring. Sometimes you'll get it up here and that's that's when you know that there's high volume on the breakout. That means that breakout is most likely going to be valid. But generally, if you want a high probability compression funnel, you need to identify this shit on an hourly to 15 minute time compression, grind line break, volume by price. The, the, the volume needs to line up at a key round number or where the breakout occurred. Because there's massive, there's obviously going to be massive volume occurring there. You're going to get breakout traders come in there. And if it's solid, you'll see price supporting on that fucking uh, uh, um, uh, volume. Uh, so that is that volume by price is going to be true support or true resistance. And generally, your exit point, what I love about volatility compression funnels, bro, is that they're so clear and concise. Meaning, you know where you need to fucking enter. You know where your target is going to be. You know that once we see where if the, the, the setup is unfolding in our favor, then you fucking add, bro. You scale, you scalp in some more. And then you know where your exit is. Generally, generally, your exit would be on the secondary low. Sometimes you even get a third a third impulse. You'll get a third impulse. And if you break out, your stock can be there, but you have to be careful because sometimes when you get that return move on the price splitter, you'll get those deep excursions and then it'll stop you out. So generally a rule of thumb, your exit point would be at the secondary low. That will ensure that you stay in the trade long enough for it to play out in your favor because then you get those type of behaviors. Sometimes you'll just literally break out of the funnel and then you just start to accelerate fucking higher into target and you get little to no heat. Pretty much what we saw in the dollar yen, dude. Dollar yen. Hourly. Look at that, dude. You you literally got little you got little to no heat at all. You got that breakout and you just started pulling back. You didn't even come back into the to the high volume zone. You just broke out and then made straight it into target. And then you, you're going to get more setups along the way. See this right here? I would not take this. Uh, uh Sal actually brought this up in the Discord. I was like, it looks good, bro, but I don't think it's something I would take. Because I don't like to take continuation funnels when you're already, first of all. This is where they get dangerous. This is where their strike rate starts to erode. When you breach a significant structure high, and then when you get something like this, see the low was made first, not the high. That, well, actually, you could argue. You could argue that the high was made. Give me a second. You could argue that the high was made first, but this is, I mean, that's not thats not how the funnel needs to look like. It's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be, remember, descending highs, ascending lows. And we didn't get that. So just because it, it all checks out, well, you are starting to contract the volatility is contracting and this and that. Yeah, you have high volume there, but look, look what's happening, man. Like this collapsed into that and it's starting to contract there. So maybe if we start to see price make a recovery, then you could look to scalp it higher into target. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's just going to fucking roll over. Because the market already made its move and we're at a significant swing point. So you can get one, two, and then maybe three. But as soon as you breach a significant structure point, I would be very hesitant to take that. Like, for example, on the cat Frank, the reason this one played out very beautifully and why we had three types of funnels within the macro structure. These are good for calling lows, man, for calling bottoms continuation structures i would i would be hesitant if i saw another funnel up here i would not take it why because we breached a structure point here now that doesn't mean that it's it's going to be all it's going to be all doom and gloom and collapse for the cat frame from here but you can get a deep pullback you get what francis refers to as progress decay once your optimal targets are made on balance of probabilities you get progress decay if you literally go back and study look this target was made and then look what happened. Prices started to descend lower. 
So go back to a lot of the funnels that we posted and then pay attention to how price behaves afterward. If anything, they're honestly good shorting opportunities. Once you start to see maybe some type of head and shoulders or some type of divergent structure, this is why we, we have so many things in our arsenal, bro, our weaponry. So we know when to bail on our trades and when we know when to take the opposite side of that, that, that market. So if I were to see some type of divergent structure here, I would look to short. Because we already know that we're going to get a period of progress decay. So, yeah, be sure you guys are taking your money at your targets. And you just observe. Like, don't worry. Oh, dude, I should have held. And, you know, I could have made a couple. Don't, don't play that fucking game, bro. Don't. Leave that for the retail trader. We want what's consistent in our data. And our data shows you need to take your fucking money at those targets. Because on balance of probabilities, you could experience some very sharp breaks, uh, some breakdowns, some um, progress decay, or just a full-blown reversal in the opposite direction. We also have a grind line here. Remember what we talked about trend lines, bro. They're important. Why? Because they act like fucking magnets. So at some point in time... We might get something like this. Literally, just how I drew it. We're going to get some type of one, two test, breach and failure setup, and then we, we might see continuation. But at some point in time, this grind line, this trend line is going to draw price back into it. What it does at that point is anybody's guess. But we would want, if we believe we're bullish and this is going to continue up, then we would need to see something like this. Breach and failure and back inside the trend line. If we see a pullback and then secondary failure, then we would look to short. It's called scenario casting, man. It's called anticipating this shit. And you will only know how to do this when you've gotten your screen time and you've seen so many scenarios play out over and over and over and over again. Don't try to catch every fucking movement, bro. Wait for your key moment. Rarely is now the key moment. There's always more time than you give yourself. Rarely is now the key moment. That's something I want you guys to write, write down in your journals. Rarely is now the moment for you to act hasty, to make a panic decision. There's always going to be more time, man. That's why we didn't panic when I saw this. That's like, bro, this is a fucking opportunity to act. Because until we hit this low, until we break back inside this funnel, bro, this is long. And then look how price accelerated into target. And we had a little micro funnel there. A little tiny, a little tiny baby funnel, bro. Look at this shit right there. Look how cute that is, bro. It looks better on the 15 minute. And then you got that false break. That is another type of setup that we teach that's probably far more powerful than anything else. Why? Because there's order flow around here. You got that false break, came back into high volume area, supported, and then boom, look at that acceleration into the news. This is a news candle, dude. And now you're done. Just take your money. You don't worry about what it's going to do, what it's done. Oh, you should have, I should have, would have, could have. Stop. Don't play those games, bro. Leave that for the retail guy. Leave that for the newbie. Take our setups. So NZD is looking good, but we're going to give this a little bit more price data. Pound NZD. Oh, this is clean right here, bro. And I was actually telling, I was, I, I posted this in the Discord. I just didn't want to take it because I'm like, bro, it's very illiquid. The spread is ass, so we're not going to get the best fills. Uh, but this is classic right here, man. Classic, classic, classic. The only time that it would ever make sense to take funnels at significant swing highs, the only time that it would make sense is when you're in a macro trending market. If you look at the pound just in general not even just this pair but the pound in general bro it's been in a fucking upward moving market this to me is a bottom i would not be surprised to see the pound put in a a, a fucking new high see it at you know 2.2 yeah this is a capitulation we might make the midpoint right there yeah literally 2.2 and then you get a divergent structure so Type 1 setup, literally type 1. You got that low. Lower low. You got that neckline. 
remember, now you get the geometry from the high of the range to the lowest point of the structure. Snap it on the neckline and be sure you guys, are, I'm being sloppy right now just because we're on the training, but be so fucking precise. Dude, if you got to zoom in, and do, you're probably going to have to wear fucking glasses. I, I lost my glasses, otherwise I would be wearing them. Uh, but you're going to get a lot of eye strain as a trader, bro. It's just, it's just part of the course, man. Because you want to make sure that your lines are so fucking precise. Get that right. Because believe it or not, bro, and Chris can attest to this, bro. We've been through this a lot, man. Sometimes, man, if your lines or your attention to detail is off just by a fucking pip, you're going to literally miss your trade by a pip. Price is maybe going to make, if your line is off, it might be when it needs to be maybe here, you'll miss the fucking trade. You'll, you're you're going to take a hit. It'll roll over because maybe your line was drawn off. Or maybe if it's not drawn correctly, it'll come up there and just by a fucking pubic hair, you miss your trade. You miss your target. And then it roll, rolls over and you lose money. And there you go. Damn near almost 2.2. Literally, I, I've seen this structure before. This is just shakeout price action. This is shakeout price action in a breakout trending market. That's all that, fuck, that's all that is, dude. That's all that is. Pull back. You're going to see this structure a lot, man. You put in a massive high, and then you aggressively sell off. But it's not a sell week template. At least not yet. Remember. Remember how, how uh, we form our peak formation highs. One, push two, push three, sell off. You need to see something like that in a grind line break. Remember, front side, back side, guys. If you are in a front side of a trend line, you need to stay with that fucking trend until further notice. If you are on the back side of a trend line, you need to play with that narrative. Yes, you might get breaches. You know, it's never going to hold it exactly. But remember, that's when you get your trend line breach and failure setups. That's another tool in our arsenal. Guys, you can never be short of opportunity. If you're not making money, it's, 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 it's literally not our fault at this point. Because I'm giving you... A recipe and a collection of setups that you can you don't even have to trade them all just master one or two i'm just good at all of them because i have years of experience but if it's too overwhelming for you master one master the type one setup only fucking long if you feel like you do better shorting only short so then look for it like i said that one push two push three push sometimes you'll get that fourth push look for the, those divergent structures master that Wait for that secondary failure. Wait for that deep retracement. And then you fizzle back into that grind line. Wait for that. Boom, you're done. Trend line. Wait for those grind line breaks and then those retests of the, the, the underside of the micro trend lines. You'll get that push one and then breach and then failure. Master that. <laughs> There's a million ways to skin a cat in this business, bro. You just need to find your way. What resonates with you? From a lot of what Chris and I, we've been back testing, bro, because we have a little portfolio that we have for one of our clients, bro. Longing is just the best bet for us right now. You know, and we're we're just good at it. We used to be, you can ask Chris, we used to be masterful shorters. But the game changed. And if we were fucking ignorant traders and we were stubborn, we would have been like, oh, dude, we just keep shorting and and, and this and that. We would We would have gone broke already, bro. No fucking investor would give us money. The reason we're successful is because we're quick to adapt. Like, we, I, dude, you guys have no idea how many conversations I've had with Chris over the phone. Like, bro, like, well, what is it that we're not seeing? You know, like, we've noticed that this was working before, but it's not working now. Maybe we need to do this and that. Bro, Chris and I, we're always on business, bro. We stand on fucking business all the time. And look at us now. We both came to agreement, dude. We're probably better off longing. And it's been paying out very well for us this year with the exception of shorting the euro early in the year. But this, the sell we template was just fucking screen. It was as textbook as they came, dude. So it doesn't mean we're not going to short, bro. But it, it just like I said, you would, you would, it, it would have to look so fucking good. And my intuition would have to literally be screaming at me. Like I have to lose sleep over it. If I don't take that trade, then we'll take it. But there's a lot of shorts that I just pass up. So I'm like, yeah, even if it played out, I'm like, we're just going to focus on longing because the market, some pair somewhere out there, something will set up for us on a daily to weekly basis. Like the NZD, Singapore dollar setting up for us. 
We just got to give it a little bit more price data. But there's another trade. You guys could long now if you wanted to. Said so you could have that tight stop, or if you want, said wait for the 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 breach of that neckline, or wait for a, a, a volatility compression funnel. That's what I'm gonna wait for, bro. Because if I see a funnel, I I'll know where to take my targets. I'll know I'll I I will understand why I'm entering. I know that this is accumulation. Wait for your key moment. All right, we're almost done, guys. Like I said, we're going to breeze through this. Uh, we're going to breeze through the charts just to see what's uh, available. This pound New Zealand does look good. Um, but like I said, because it's a very thin, illiquid pair and it eats a lot of your margin, um, it's not very cost-effective to, to do this. But this is a clean, clean fucking setup, man. Clean fucking setup. Look at these funnels, bro. You're going to see them all the time. Funnels, it's not something new or something that we're deviating from our process. This is order flow, bro. This is a stop hunt. This is all stop hunt, bro. We're just adding a little bit more filtering criteria to ensure that it is a high probability trade. Because back then, Chris and me, we would just fucking buy. We would fade shit and hold it until it moved in our favor. And I, we, we talked about we can't do that anymore. Because it's very... When we're right... Which is more often than not, we're making fucking money, bro. We're flying high. We're high in the sky. But when we're wrong, we undo a lot of our gains. And we, we just cannot have that anymore. And since the start of the year, bro, my PL has been in the fucking green. And I love waking up every day knowing that, bro, I'm starting the, the year to date. My PL is fucking good. I'm in the money. You guys should already start making money or recovering any losses that you've made. And we're going to get there. So this is a good setup, man. This is just clear, clear signs of accumulation right here. Why? You got the box, key round number, 2.05, midpoint number, and then you got the box, and then boom, pull back, return, move, and then you're getting continuation structures and what seems to be a macro prevalent continuation structure higher. So, so it's a good setup. It is a great setup. You could long now. Where would your exit be? Here. That's your exit point. No ants, ifs, what's, fucking buts. Don't hold and hope forever. If price comes back there, just take your fucking loss. This is why I love fucking funnels, bro. And then if you start to see a base out and then some type of break, then you could take a leverage trade. Maximize your gains and then just keep scalping it higher, bro. All you need is one to two of these type of setups per week and they will happen multiple times throughout the week. Guys, we are sitting on fucking cash, man. Euros are. We cut, we cut early because it just wasn't complying, bro. And that's okay. Or maybe maybe we're, we were just off. Maybe I drew the setup a little bit too early. Maybe we're getting that false break. Or maybe I need to draw the line like that. Maybe that, that's what it is. And, they, and, and look where... Look where the price splitter is. It's at a key round number. So maybe we're still right, bro. We were just early and I cut the trade. It's at a key round number. That's a key round number right there. 20.50. And you got that high first, that low. Two. Two. So maybe we put in a third impulse. Come back. And then boom. Volume by price. You get that right here on your projection indicators, fixed range volume profile. So volume by price. Remember, the way you use this is, is you take it at the high of the anchor point, which is the start of the funnel. And then you run it to current price data. That's as far as it'll let you go. And then you click that. And then the volume is up here. That's not good. That's not how it should look. So that this could mean that it's distribution. This could, this could be a distribution cycle. But we're going to give it more time because we got a grind line break. We got a funnel. There is high volume, but just not where we want it. So maybe what's going to happen is if, if we get a breakout and price supports on this high volume zone, then that would be a phenomenal. You take your, you know, your, your projection. That would be a phenomenal time to enter long and more often than not man what i've noticed that generally we put them at the the price splitters but you could put them also on the high volume area they'll give you projected targets but like i said man that that's not consistent 
Uh, but I noticed that you can also put them there, and it'll give you, it'll still give you an accurate target. I just wouldn't. Um, that's generally where the overperformance comes from, you know. Because if you guys notice, bro, if you study the funnels, more often than not, man, you do get overperformance. You'll you'll get price spike into that, and then it fizzles out. Well, the reason being is because realistically, the target is where true support is, which is at the high volume. But I try not to do that, man. Try not to do that because that's deviate, deviating away from process, a good principles, good disciplines, etc. So the euros are still interesting. We're going to keep it on our watch list. It's just setting up. That's all it's doing, bro. It's setting up. Now, if you're undisciplined, what you would fucking do is you would enter now. You would enter now and just have your stop there. But like I said, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, guys. Just... There will be times where we do get into a funnel a little bit earlier because it's just our intuition is going to kick in. And we already, it's just everything is lining up. We got the grind line break. It's at a key level. Uh, the structure is bottoming out. But the problem with this one, the reason you have to be careful with the euros are is because, bro, look at the, this market's been trending for fucking ages. And it's already at a high. So it's on balance of probabilities, it's more likely to collapse than it is to continue. Like I said, it's a very low probability situation and it's not a trade that I would be looking forward to on scaling in aggressively. But the funnel is there. You got a little micro funnel here. Like once you train your brain for this stuff, like you just start to see it, man. You got the high, boom, it starts to compress, et cetera, et cetera. So it will be on our watch list. We're just going to give it a little bit more price data. Euro NZD. It's fucking nasty, bro. I wouldn't trade this shit, dude. I still wouldn't trade the shit. Even if it keeps going up, there's just no, there's no setup. There's no setup here. Sure, you might have a divergent structure. But I still wouldn't trade it. And plus, we've already missed a big chunk of the move. So you got that pullback return move into the neckline, but this thing could still erode our efficiency of the trade and still kind of hover around there. Sometimes it might even have a deeper pullback and then it'll go and make your target. But as I said, this I just wouldn't trade this, man, because it's just so fucking choppy and nasty. Like Maybe eventually it'll present a good setup. It's just good to have on the watch list, but there you go. We'll just see how this divergent structure plays out so we continue to train our brain to see it in real time. Pound Aussie. Um, yeah, we could honestly be hitting a distribution template, to be honest. I mean, it did breach a significant high. And it's just starting to base out, you know, tap, tap, tap. And it's just starting to fizzle out. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the four hourly. Price had that breakout pullback return move into high volume zone. So what do we wait for? You just wait. So if you want it to be ballsy, Realistically, I mean, this isn't a bad setup. I just don't like how they're, it's in between all this fucking chop. I don't like that. I like it at the lows. I like it when we're catching falling knives because we're very fucking good at that. That is a stupid myth that gets perpetuated in the trading industry. Oh, don't catch falling knives. And then we do it all the fucking time and I still have my fingers intact, bro. You just have to do it at the precise moment. Like I said, key levels, breach, significant structure points, time of day, day of week. Remember, timings, levels, behavior of price. Timings, levels, behavior of price. Uh, let me see. Sal, what do I mean by that? What, what do I mean by timings? What, 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 what's it, what does timings mean in our holy trinity of our process? It's all about um the, the weekly cycle, bro, and then the sessions. Fucking animal, bro. Yes, yes. Weekly cycles and sessions. Remember, guys, you're going to have three types of sessions in the Forex market. The Asian session, Euro-London session, or London session, as people more often know it by. Um, and then the, the New York session. Generally, generally, most volatile sessions are the London and New York. Yes, you can get some type of movement on the Asian session, especially if there's some type of news catalyst. But the Asian session generally is designed 
uh, to form a, a higher low for that particular session to set up for the Euro London session. All it does is generate liquidity. That's all the Asian session's purpose is. It generally moves depending on, mo on most pairs, but generally on most pairs, you're looking at about 25 to 30 pips of movement. We don't trade the Asian session, bro. Unless we see a structure like this during the Asian session, I mean, you could take your trade down. But we'll get into that in a little bit. But you get your, your time of day. Time of day is you get your sessions. And we trip, we typically trade the New York session. That is because it's early for us. We don't have to stay up at ungodly hours of the night. You know, you're not, if you're sleeping, bro, you're not going to trade the Euro London session well. I promise you that, man. Uh, you guys are lucky because in California, you can trade it. I can't over here because I have to wait till 3, 4 o'clock in the fucking morning. At the, over there, it's probably like 11.30 to 1, to 1 a.m. You guys are lucky. I'm not. I have to wait for the New York session because I live on Eastern Standard Time. And mind you, the, the, all markets function on Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time is New York time. So you have the pre-market session, which is 7 to 8 a.m., then you have the 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 pre market equity uh, pre market open, which is eight thirty, and then you have the New York equity open, which is nine a.m. That is when the New York session begins. You can still get a lot of movement through the pre market session, but that's generally a trap because when New York opens, that's when you start to get the real manipulation. So the the the, the peak, what we call the golden window, is generally around ten to eleven a.m. Yes, sometimes you'll get your stop punts exactly at 9 a.m. Sometimes you'll get it at fucking 12. Sometimes at 10, sometimes at 11. But generally, the rule of thumb, guys, is 10 to 11 a.m. 10.30 seems to be the sweet spot. That is where you get the most volatility. That is when you get your setup. So maybe at 9 a.m., it's trending. 10 comes along, range, and then 10.30, boom, stop punt, and then you move. That's how it happens. It's literally how it happens. Uh, the market makers are not going to make it easy for you. They're not going to be precise every fucking moment, every goddamn day. Because if they did that, everybody would be fucking rich. So you kind of have to just have this understanding and have a feel for things. And then you have day of week. So we just talked about time of day and then day of week. So remember what we talked about. Sundays and Mondays are what, Danny? We call these what? Um, so those are the ones where it's, I know it's like less like movement, uh, going on those days. So it's more like, uh, like observe just to, uh, see what like price is doing. Okay. No, close, close. Good first setup. Yeah. Uh, we generally call them trap days because Sundays and Mondays are generally establishing an opening range. So when price opens on Sunday, we get the price. And then it's Sundays are generally low vol. We used to have what we call a, a gap failure setup where if price did gap on the open, we would generally trade it back into the gap or wait for the gap to, to trade. And then it would generally move in the continued direction. But we're, because the markets are becoming more and more liquid and efficient throughout throughout the years, I guess more people are becoming traders now. You know, even your fucking grandma. You know? <laughs> uh, um, everybody's trading now. It's fucking crazy. Um, we're, we're starting to see a lot more liquidity and when there's li more liquidity, there's less gaps. Um, but anyway, Sundays and Mondays are trap days. When you get the Sunday open, Monday will generally is what we call the opening range. It's going to generally form a high or low. And then Tuesdays are days that typically do what? Why are Tuesdays and Wednesdays important? Um, Derek, answer that for me, bro. Why are Tuesdays and Wednesdays important? Mm, those are usually the highs of the week, aren't they? Yep. Highs and lows of the weeks are going to be generally established on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So you might get your opening range and price closes like that on Monday at 12 p.m. at night, Eastern Standard Time. And then Tuesday comes along and then you breach the high. And then Wednesday, boom, failure. You know, or Tuesday works the high. Wednesday is a stop hunt and that's they lock in the high of week. And then Thursday, Friday, parabolic days. Those as we refer to them. 
and then vice versa. You could get Tuesday do this. Wednesday comes back at the high, tanks, Thursday, and then boom, you know, Friday you get a pair of bucks. They're going to play these fucking markets. Very, they're never going to leave it clear and concise for you. But Sundays and Mondays are generally trap days. We don't generally trade those days. Tuesdays, Wednesdays are locking in the high or low of week. Thursday, Fridays are either continuation days, parabolic days, uh, or reversal days. So continuation parabolic days just means that's where you're going to get the bulk of the volatility. So maybe Wednesday locks in the low and then Thursday comes in. Maybe there might be some news catalyst and then you get those parabolic swings. Look at fucking charts, man. And I promise you, you're going to see these templates play out over and over at some point in time, sometime in the week. Hell, but sometimes Wednesdays, you might get parabolic days. But this is how typically that weekly cycle works out. At some point in time, you will get significant movement in that week. All you have to do is just be positioned and proportioned correctly when we get those parabolic days. So this goes back to our prior narrative. If we make a lot of money early in the week, what does that mean towards the ending of the week for us? Uh, Angel, talked about this numerous times, bro. If we make er money early in the week, we should start to consider doing what towards the ending of the week? Likely to happen towards the ending of the week. Take off a majority of your profits because uh, price usually slows down or reverses at the end of the week. You fucking animals, man. You guys are about to make a fucking grown man cry, bro. Like, you guys are on it. Yes, if we make money early in the week, we're likely to give it back towards the ending of the week. There's, I have journals full of this fucking data, bro. This is stuff that Chris and I, we've talked about many, many times. If, you, if, if the week is slow in the beginning, we're likely to make money. We lost money early in the week. We're likely to make it back towards the ending of the week. Because at some point in time, if we make money early in the week, we're probably just trading the opening range very well. And we're just catching these micro trends. But then when the the midweek reversal comes or the parabolic day comes, you need to be out of your trade because you will get squeezed out. Or vice versa. If it's slow in the beginning of the week, like it has been this week, dude, expect tomorrow or Friday to give us the opportunity to take a parabolic move. You will get a massive move sometime throughout that week because they have to close that weekly candle. So it might be closing bearish. It's what we call a uh, 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 trap candles. Flip on a dime candles. Like you'll notice throughout early in the week, the candle's red and then Thursday, Friday, it just fucking reverses. There's a whole fuck you reversal. It happens because you get those parabolic moves. So timings, levels, behavior of price. Timings, time of day, day of week, weekly cycles. Let's talk about levels. Easy. If you did nothing else but restrict your trading activity at the extreme points of price, you're going to increase your statistical edge, whether that's monthly lows, weekly lows, daily lows, et cetera, et cetera. And then look for key round numbers. If you scrunch out, if you scrunch your fucking chart on a higher time compression, pay attention to how price behaves at these round numbers, bro. Like 1.7, you have that capitulation. And then price is always moving from one key level to the next. So if you were to hold as a swing trader, you know where you should be taking your targets. So let's say you got a setup down here. Look how it moved into the 1.8. 1.8. Look how it moved into the, the, the 1.9. Price is always moving from one key level to the next. It just has to because the mark that if that isn't proof that the markets are controlled to the fucking digit and manipulated, I don't know what else to tell you. Look how it moves in increments from one key level to the next. That's all you got to do, bro. You're just fucking playing. You're trying to play ping pong, man. That's all you're trying to do. It's going to move from one key level to the next. And it, it moves in increments of pips and cycles. So most pairs will typically, at least from one key level, at least for this pair, let's say from that one, to that one, that's about almost a thousand pips. That's a little extreme just because, like I said, it is an e-liquid pair, a thin market. But the euro, if you study the euro, man, it moves about 500 pips per key level on massive time compressions. So from this box to the next, you're looking at about 500 pips. It doesn't change. 
So keep that in mind when we're timing lows. And when we catch, when we identify a macro distribution cycle or a capitulation low, we know where we need to take our money. We know where price is likely to go. So if we take a look at the euro, it's right underneath the 1.1 which is a little bit concerning because maybe it could sell off into the 1.05 or maybe the 1.6, right? But net net, if price were to break outside of the 1.1, we know where it's going to fucking target next, the 115. We've been banging about the 115 for a while now because it's it's right there. It's literally right. You want to make sure because if you're too close, it's going to you see the top, you see the, the the price axis, you get more price data. Try to scrunch up to the point where you just have you know, uh, um these nice clean boxes, and then uh, you have uh, 500 pips of movement. So 1.05 to 1.1, that's 500 pips of movement. Then 1.15, another five, uh, another 500 pips of movement. So if price were to break the 1.1, 1 we know where it's gonna fucking go next, dude. It's gonna go to the 115, and it might even overperform that. Because on this other chart, we have an inefficiency zone, on the six month time frame. This is another setup that we don't talk about often because I don't want you guys to get confused, but an inefficiency zone is generally when you have the, the midpoint of a candle, like the body, so right here. See that low of that bearish candle? And then that high, that midpoint, that body candle right there. And it generally does it with velocity. Like these are a lot better. Like if you get something like that, it would be a lot better to trade. Like because the velocity and nature of how that price candle moved is clear signs that there were a lot of unfulfilled order, a lot of unfulfilled orders. Like how price came into that and it sold off. So we have an inefficiency zone here. It literally devoured that fucking uh, six month candle. So I feel that price would come back, back, trade up here, and then we get the the, the next wave uh, or bear market in the euro, and then we fucking hit a new parity low. So I, at some point in time, I would not be surprised to see the euro at zero, uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. These lows will get taken out, but I think we see some upside first before that happens. But we need, we, like I said, we need to be a little bit patient with this one. We don't just want to start charging in right now because... You know, the euro could sell off. Uh, before I consider longing uh, or adding more to my to my position, I want to see that it's holding within the funnel, because it could it could literally just come back in here, false break, and then continue, or it could literally just start collapsing, and our our macro thesis on the head and shoulders plays out. So it, it's all it's a little iffy right now. It's not high probability yet, but we're getting there. Um, we're almost done, guys. Just bear with me. Um. Let's see. So we know that NZD is a setup that we have on our watch list. We're going to see how it unfolds tomorrow. Euros are another one. Pound Aussie looks great, but we're not going to trade it. NZD CAD. Let's talk about the NZD CAD. Why would we trade this pair? Significant structure breached. Another one. Okay, now we're cooking. Now you now what do we identify? We try to see if a low is put in. How do we identify those lows? Look for those bearish candles. Boom. We had one here. Like I said, just because you see them aren't instant signs for you to go balls to the walls. But you know that a localized low is occurring. And look at that. That right there is the nail on the coffin for me. I would fucking long this shit, right? Honestly, to be honest, I'll probably long it before we go to bed. Um, then you scope in on lower time frames, get your grind line breaks. That's a grind line break for me. Now you can either wait for a divergent structure, you can wait for a funnel, or you could just be ballsy and long now. But the fact that these lows were taken out and then we had that, uh, a massive wick on that bearish close, th that to me, a bottoms in. So maybe it maybe it compresses throughout the year London session. Maybe tomorrow we get a setup, but yeah. 
If I see something like that, I'm, I'm fucking long, bro. Balls to the fucking walls. And you just take your money at your targets and then probably at the high here. And then maybe here. So NZD cat is something we're going to be eyeing on. That just doesn't mean go long. I mean, you could go long now, honestly. You really could. Uh, and then your, your exit point would be at this negative candle close. But if you want a tighter entry, you would wait for a volatility compression funnel. But you can just fucking scalp it, you know, really. NZD cat looks good. Euro cat, nope, nothing interesting. Even though we got that negative candle close at the low there, this to me is too fucking choppy. Look at the four hourly. I would not trade this. We are, we are at a significant conjecture point. Price is just kind of rounding off there. We did have accumulation here. Um, this is just not a, it's not a good chart. Let me look at this shit, bro. What the fuck is this? I, I just wouldn't trade it. There's no there's no clear macro funnel. There's no peak formation high. Uh, there's no continuation structure. It's just all over the place. We don't trade that. At least yet. Aussie uh, Aussie cat something I'm still holding. Why? Because we got a breach of the significant low accumulation, clean neckline, pullback, return move. Price has been supporting and showing us that it wants to support. 